Hey there, College Algebra folks, back here with another video where we're going to work through some examples covering 6.5 material, where if you spent some time in the uh, Blackboard, um, you would have become familiar with what we call the inverse matrix for a given matrix, right? And its ability uh, to help us perform matrix division and um, to help us solve systems of equations, all right? This matrix here, uh, known as the inverse matrix, is, is going to be involved in the process of dividing one matrix from another matrix, where this matrix division can then be applied to help us solve systems of equations in a very algorithmic manner where it's a bit more like a calculation as opposed to a, a puzzle that you're solving using either substitution or elimination method, right? Um, and then what we'll add on top of all this in the end is we will see that there is a very quick method for calculating inverse uh, matrices when it is the case that we have a two by two matrix. And I'll, I'll be showing you some skills on the calculator. All of that uh, in the next section of material. In fact, all of these matrix methods uh, can be done on our calculator if you're if you're so inclined to, to spend a little time there learning these skills. Right. So um, we will see that going on in the next video. Take note. I'll break out the calculator and also show you how to get through some of these steps. But what we do start with in these examples is actually defining and finding our inverse matrix for a given matrix. And what is special about an inverse matrix for a given matrix is that if I take them, an inverse matrix and a given matrix, and I take their dot product with one another, it produces what we call an identity matrix. Right? Where if I am talking a two by two matrix dotted with a two by two matrix, this two by two matrix dotted with its identity matrix, right? Uh, its corresponding identity matrix, well, sorry, inverse matrix is going to produce what we call a two by two identity matrix. Where what is an identity matrix? It is a matrix made up of ones and zeros where the diagonal of the matrix, right, running from top left to bottom right, is made up of ones, and the other locations are filled up with zeros, right? It is a matrix way of kind of representing the value of one in the matrix number system, where what we see going on here is we are taking a matrix number represented by A, multiplying by it by its inverse and having that result in the value of, in a sense, a, a, a value of one that's presented in the matrix context. Again, how could we kind of relate to this analogously uh, to our understanding of just multiplication is you might say you have a value like three. You could take three and multiply it by what we might call the inverse of three, which would be represented by one over three. And what is three times one over three? It's the value of one, right? Those two values, in a sense, undoing each other in an inverse relationship with one another, leaving behind the value of one in their, in their wake, right? So, uh, what we are going to be looking at that is, is, is that, that idea analogously here in the context of matrices. We have one value that when we multiply it by another, they undo each other in value. And it produces the idea or the, the number of one in the matrix number system. All right? Now, how do we obtain that inverse matrix for a given matrix value? How do we find that inverse number whose product yields uh, with our given matrix yields the value of one in the matrix context? Is we rely on the idea to begin with that we might take note here is that when we think about 
A times its inverse being equal to the identity matrix. First things first is that you can divide by the identity matrix on both sides, and it does not change the relationship. Uh, you still are left with A times A inverse. You are still left with what we would say is your identity matrix. And similarly, what we can take note on is if I have A times A inverse equal to some identity matrix, what must be true from this is that I can divide both sides by one of these two matrices in the product here and have the other value of the matrix. For instance, I can divide both sides by matrix A and note that the inverse matrix is nothing more than my ID identity matrix divided by A. Right? Or I could conclude from all that and divide both sides by the inverse matrix and conclude that my matrix A is nothing more than the identity matrix divided by my inverse matrix. And what I'm able to do with this is combine these ideas then at some point. I can either combine it here or combine it here, and actually the way I'm going to combine it is with this statement here, is not only does A equal the identity matrix divided by A inverse, because I'm able to divide any quantity by the identity matrix and not have it change its value, I can divide both sides here by the identity matrix and not have it change its value. What we can say overall is that the value A divided by the identity matrix must be equal to our identity matrix divided by A inverse. And this is the statement that I'm going to exploit to help me find my inverse matrix. And Sorry folks, I found I had an error there in my work. I had to go back uh, and double check some things. But where we're going to have to come back and pick up here is again we are going to exploit this idea seen here to help us find our inverse matrix. And as we had noted, the way we're going to do that is we are going to start with this idea, matrix A divided by the identity matrix, which can be expressed as the augmented matrix A divided by 1, 0, 0, 1, when we have a 2 by 2 matrix, and consider rewriting that into the form of our identity matrix divided by the inverse, which is going to take on the augmented form 1, 0, 0, 1, divided by A's inverse. And the way we're going to go from this augmented form to this augmented form is we are going to use our row equivalent operations. Uh, keep in mind, what are those row equivalent operations? Those are, you can multiply, well, you can replace a row with the itself and, and a multiple of that row, right? Or with a constant multiple of that row. You can... Uh, replace a row by adding itself to another row, or you can replace a row with the constant multiple of itself for another row added to that row, right? Uh, we have those row equivalent operations and we're gonna apply them to take this matrix seen here and rewrite it to resemble this matrix seen here, specifically the left, rewrite the right-hand side, moving this identity matrix from the right-hand side to the left-hand side using my row equivalent operations, which is gonna reveal my identity or my inverse matrix uh, seen here on the right-hand side. Now, if we consider doing that for this case, where a bar is equal to negative 4, 1, negative 2, 8. We are going to interpret that as being the matrix A divided by the identity matrix. So that will be divided by 1, 0, 0, 1, where we're now going to consider rewriting this into the identity matrix over A inverse 
by moving that identity matrix from the right-hand side to the left-hand side of this form, which is going to leave the inverse matrix as this matrix description seen here. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to apply our REOs to the statement seen here, right, to the, the format that we begin with, this augmented matrix, so that we start to make it look like this scene here. And we've done these REOs before, uh, solving systems using Gaussian elimination. And if you recall, when using these REOs to, to rewrite a matrix, right, involving ones and zeros and zeros and ones, this identity form, it's often easiest to first approach trying to produce the zeros before trying to produce these ones in value. All right. Um, however, you know, however you like to work it, though, I, you know, is up to you. But I often consider approaching the zeros in value before approaching these ones. All right. For example, I could, for instance, make this into the zero that I need seen here by just simply multiplying this row by negative one eighth and adding it to the row above. This is not going to change my second row at all, but it is going to change what I find up here in my first row. Negative one eighth times negative two is positive one fourth, and when positive one fourth is added to negative four, you get negative 15 fourths. When you do that negative one eighth times eight, you get negative one in value, and when added to the one, that's up there, you get zero in value. And we obtain that zero we want in that location. Now we do continue this down the line. Negative one eighth times zero is zero. Added to one is one. And negative one eighth times one is simply negative one eighth. And added to zero produces negative one eighth in that location of the matrix. Now with that zero being found, let's consider finding this zero. How we're going to obtain this zero is multiplying through the first row and adding it into the second. All right? This is not going to change our first row at all. It will, however, change our second row, and our hope is to make this into a zero. And we might stop and ask ourselves, what number x times negative 15 fourths equals negative 2 in value or equals the opposite of negative 2 right equals what we would say is positive 2 in value so that when we add it to negative 2 we get 0 in value Right? So what number is that? And we can see we can just multiply both sides by negative 4 fifteenths. X would be equal to 2 times negative 4 fifteenths, which is equivalent to negative 8 fifteenths in value. So I'm going to multiply through this first row by negative 8 fifteenths and add that to my second row. And when I do that, negative 8 fifteenths times negative 15 fourths makes positive 2. And when added to negative 2 makes this a into a 0, as we had suspected with the algebra. Now negative 8 fifteenths times 0 is 0, so 0 plus 8 is 8. Negative 8 fifteenths times 1 is negative 8 fifteenths. Added to 0 is negative 8 fifteenths. And negative 8 fifteenths times negative 1 8 turns into positive 1 fifteenth. And one added to one becomes 16 fifteenths in value. All right? And you can see here, folks, we are really close to being done. What we need to do now is turn these locations seen here and here into these values of one. And that can be done pretty quick and easy. All right? It doesn't take much more to get us to this set, this position or this uh, description of the left-hand side of this augmented matrix. All I have to do is multiply through the first row by whatever's going to make this into 1. 
negative 4 fifteenths will do. All right, negative 4 fifteenths times negative 15 fourths is 1 in value. Times 0 is 0. Times 1 is negative 4 fifteenths. Times negative 1 eighth is positive. What is that going to be? Positive 1 tenth. No, 1 thirtieth in value. Negative times negative is positive. The 4 and the 8 cancel, leaving a 2 in the denominator, so it's going to be 1 15th times 1 half is 1 30th in value. And then through the denominator here, we're going to just, well, not denominator, through the second row, we're just going to multiply through by 1 8th in value. 1 8th times 0 is 0. 1 8th times 8 is 1. 1 8th times negative 8 fifteenths becomes negative 1 15th. All right. Notice the 8's cancel, leaving you just negative 1 15th. And then 1 8th times 16 fifteenths. The 8 and the 16 cancel, leaving you with just 2 fifteenths in value. And what we have here, folks, since the left-hand side now looks like the left-hand side of this augmented matrix takes on the form of the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, what must be on the left-hand side here must be our or, sorry, right-hand side, must be our inverse matrix, all right? What we're able to say is something along the lines of, so for A equal to negative 4, 1, negative 2, 8, all right? A inverse is equal to negative 4 fifteenths, 1 thirtieth, negative 1 15th and 2 15ths in value, right? That becomes my inverse of this matrix here, which means what? Well, which means if I take this times this, right? We go back to this idea here. The product of those two matrices should produce my identity matrix, this matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. And take note. If I take negative 4, 1, negative 2, 8, and I dot that with negative 4 fifteenths, 1 thirtieth, negative 1 fifteenth, 2 fifteenths, notice what the result is. All right? That is a row column product, right? Negative 4 times negative 4 fifteenths is positive 16 fifteenths plus 1 times negative 1 15th is negative 1 15th. So what is 16 15th plus negative 1 15th in value? It is 15 15ths in value, which is equivalent to what? The value of 1, which is what we should start to see in that location if we're going to form our identity matrix. Notice what happens when I take this times this row column multiplication. Negative 4 thirtieths plus 2 fifteenths. 2 fifteenths is 4 thirtieths. So negative 4 thirtieths plus 4 thirtieths is 0 in value. And we get 1, 0 for that first row in the product. If we continued that here in a row column, this would turn into 0. 8 fifteenths minus 8 fifteenths does produce 0. And this would turn into 1. Negative 2 thirtieths Right? Yeah, that should be negative 2 thirtieths times Oh, 16 fifteenths, would be, which would be 32 thirtieths. Right? So negative 2 thirtieths, and, oh, plus 32 thirtieths is 30 thirtieths, and 30 thirtieths does simplify to the value of 1. Yes, it does check. That's what it means to be an inverse matrix, folks. So, um, again, that is just the first problem. These inverse matrices are a little long. Right in their calculation, 
right? They do take a little bit of work to get through, right? But it all involves those row equivalent operations. And we'll do a few more of these in the work here, folks. In fact, what we might highlight here in this video, if I can, without making a mistake, we can use this inverse idea to actually perform oops, let me get this you know, fold it up nice here right. to actually perform the process of matrix division one thing we ought to note is that matrix A divided by matrix B, right, is just matrix A times the identity matrix divided by matrix B, right? This quotient of matrices can be broken up to be thought of as this division of matrices. Or what do we know about an inverse or an identity matrix divided by a matrix, right? And where does that, right? Here, an identity matrix I, in, divided by a, a given matrix is equal to its inverse matrix. This here is just equal to the inverse of B. So the way we're going to calculate this division is we're actually going to take A times what's going to be B's inverse. Well, we need to find B's inverse. Here's B. All right. Uh, negative 1, 6, 4, negative 2, right? We get this matrix here. And actually, we want to work with its augmented form. 1, 0, 0, 1, where we want to convert this into this statement 1, 0, and this into the statement 0, 1 in that process of matrix division. And we've done this before, right? We know that we might consider making this into 0, by maybe doing something here, right? Well, consider making this zero first and consider making this zero first. For example, I can make this a zero by multiplying this by six and adding it to this row, right? That's not gonna change my top row, but will change my bottom row, my second row, right? Six times negative one is negative six plus six is zero. Six times four is 24. 24 minus 2, 22 in value. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 0 is 6. 6 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. All right? Now we might consider multiplying something by 22 to make it into the 4 into a 0 here. All right? So what we're going to need right, we might say off to the side is what times 22 is going to equal the opposite of 4, right, and well, we would note that would be x equal to negative 4 divided by 22, or x would equal negative 2 elevenths. If I multiply this by negative 2 elevenths, right, we're not going to be changing our second row at all, but we will be converting our first row where this should produce the value of zero here, right? Notice negative 2 11 times 22 leaves positive 2 here, times negative 2 is negative 4, and that does add to give you zero. Now that times zero is zero, added to negative 1 is still negative 1. Negative 22 11 times 6 is negative 12 11. So we're going to have negative 12 elevenths plus 1. Well, that would be plus 11 elevenths. So negative 12 elevenths plus 11 elevenths is minus 1 eleventh. All right? And then negative 2 elevenths times 1 is negative 2 elevenths plus 0 is negative 2 elevenths. Where we're now really close to finding the inverse right? We just have to 
change these, making this into one and this into a one. And we can make this into a one just by dividing out the negative. One zero, divide out the negative, we'd get one eleventh, two elevenths. And we can make this into one by dividing out the 22. This is, uh, we're gonna multiply here by negative one. Here we're gonna multiply by 1 22nd. That would become zero, one. That would simplify to 3 elevenths. And that would become 1 22nd, right? And what is this? This is B inverse, right? We might note B inverse is 1 11th, 2 11th, 3 11th, 1 22nd, right? So A divided by B, which we just noted as A times B's inverse, which is what we highlighted here, is just going to be then equal to 3, 5, 1, 8, multiplied by this inverse function, 1 11th, or inverse back, uh, matrix, 2 11th, 3 11th, and 1 22nd. Right? 3 11th plus 15 11th, right? We're doing that row column multiplication. 3 11th plus 15 11th is 18 11th. Row column here. 6 elevenths plus 5 20 seconds is, 6 elevenths is actually 12 20 seconds plus 5 20 seconds is 27 20 seconds. So that would be there. And then here we have 1 eleventh plus 24 elevenths, which is 25 elevenths. And here we have in this row column, we have one, uh, 2 elevenths plus eight twenty seconds. Now that's four elevenths. So two elevenths plus four elevenths is six elevenths. And here is the result given for A, uh, ma matrix A divided by matrix B in this example. And we did make use of our inverse matrix for matrix B to perform that calculation. And where the inverse of matrix B came from Right? That was this work seen here. It was taking matrix B, expressing it in that augmented form of matrix B over the identity matrix, and reconverting that into the identity matrix over B inverse using our row equivalent operations. And with B inverse, I was able to perform this division using the process of a dot product with the inverse value. All right, so folks, uh, I got a couple more problems to look at here where we're gonna look at solving these systems, All right? But that does get us through our first two examples here in uh, this set of notes, right? Or in this section of material. And, and really this is probably the heavy stuff in this section, right? Uh, but we will be looking at ways of doing all this on our calculator, folks. There, there are ways of doing uh, matrices, putting matrices into our calculator, doing the matrix operation with those matrices, and even finding these inverses. So that, you know, takes some of the agony out of doing this calculation here, and I will be showing you that shortly. So, but we do want to come back to this uh, soon enough, but I'm going to stop here just so I don't run out of time on this video and pick up with these examples in the next uh, section, right, or in the next bit of this material. Be right back. Hey there, College Algebra folks. Back here uh, where we're looking at the, what we might say is the second half in uh, the study of the inverse matrix where we're going to look at using the inverse matrix to solve a system of equations. Uh, to solve a system of equations where we're going to um, 
solve that system in the realm of matrices and that inverse matrix is going to be um, used in the solution process. Now, where this all begins is with the idea that a system of equations can be represented as a, uh, what, a, 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 a mathematical statement involving matrices and operations on matrices. As we see here, right, this is, as implied by the question, a system of equations, right? This is a, a set of equations that hopefully has a solution to that system, right? A value of x and y that makes that equation true. Where here, if we thought about plugging in those values of x and y and doing that row, uh, col that row column multiplication with these two rows in this one column to produce this result seen here on the right-hand side of our equal sign, um, there would be two numbers where that, that would be true right? And how we can think about this as a system, this is a system, if we were, we were to set up that row column multiplication seen on the left-hand side here, uh, the row 3, 2 multiplied by the column x, y would turn into the statement 3x plus 2y. And what we're saying is that is all equal to the value of 14, this value seen on the right-hand side. And the statement negative 4 comma 5 times this column xy would be negative 4x plus 5y. And what we're saying is that all equals negative 34 on the left hand side or on the right hand side. Where this statement, this this the statement of, of the product of this two by two matrix with this. Uh, what we would say is a two by one variable matrix equal to this two by one uh, matrix of values, right? This statement here is representative of this system seen here. It's just written with uh, matrix operations and the use of matrices. Where, again, if we generalize what we might say here on the left-hand side, Perhaps this is what we're calling matrix A. That matrix A is being multiplied by what we might call some variable matrix. So what would a variable matrix look like? Well, we may maybe use X as our variable and we would have a matrix value, right? So maybe this is our variable matrix and all that must be equal to uh, what would be our solution, right? Now, how we might go about writing that solution is maybe we call that solution this matrix B, right? It's this two by one matrix seen here on the right hand side. If we take a two by two matrix and we dot it with a two by one matrix, the result will itself be a two by one matrix. And again, how do you determine all that? That that is dependent upon the number of rows seen in the first matrix in your product and the number of columns seen in the second matrix where the number of columns seen in your first matrix has to be equivalent to the number of rows that you express here in your second matrix in this product. And that is exactly the relationship we see going on here in this statement. Where, what do we know about a linear form that assumes this form a times x equal to b and we're considering wanting to solve for x and in this case we are trying to find this matrix of values we say represents little x little y right well we would use division right we would divide both sides by a right we would consider dividing both the left and the right hand side by a we'd have Matrix A times X bar divided by A on the left equal to matrix B divided by A on the right. All right? Where these matrices on the left would cancel and what we would be left with is the statement X would be equal to B divided by A. But in the realm of matrices, we don't necessarily divide one matrix by another. What we have found is that it involves a multiplication of a matrix with its inverse. 
So really what is gonna end up happening here, instead what we're gonna see is when we have that matrix equation A times the matrix A times our variable matrix Y equal to matrix B, what we are going to do on the left-hand side here is take and multiply matrix A by its inverse. Where over here on the right-hand side, right, uh, we are gonna have A times, uh, A inverse times A times X on the left. And on the right-hand side, we would end up having the statement let me take this out up, up here. Let's bring this over here. And say this would have, now the order that you multiply matrices in does change the value. So since we're multiplying A here on the left-hand side by A inverse, we're gonna multiply B on the left-hand side. And notice that has to be the order that things occur anyway to have this uh, the uh, row column multiplication occur appropriately in terms of order. So it would be A inverse times B on the right hand side. And what do we know about these here is that they cancel away giving you in a sense your identity matrix or the value of one where that identity matrix times any matrix is just itself. So that is just gonna leave behind our matrix X, the variable matrix represented here all equal to A inverse times matrix B, all right? And our variable matrix will be found by performing this dot product between the inverse of A, A being the matrix we see on the left-hand side of this calculation, this matrix seen here, its inverse dotted with this matrix 14, negative 34, all right? So what do we need to do in this problem, right? So we need to find A inverse, all right? Now, how again do we find A inverse? Remember, that is a process, right? The way that we find A inverse is we are gonna exploit the idea that A bar divided by I bar is equal to three, two, negative four, five, divided by one, zero, zero, one. And we're gonna wanna rewrite that so that it looks like I bar divided by A bar inverse, where on the right-hand side, we're gonna produce the inverse function, right? We're gonna think of this as being A inverse on the right-hand side of this augmented uh, matrix, and on the left-hand side, uh, producing that identity matrix 1001, right? Where We're gonna change this left-hand side into this and make this right-hand side into this using again those REOs, those row equivalency operations. And as I said, you usually wanna start about thinking about how can I get my values of zero in these two locations seen here and here. Now to get a zero in both those locations, we might say, all right, uh, to begin with, uh, to get a zero in here, for instance, I would need to multiply my second row by something that would become negative two right here. So what's gonna cancel the five and make a negative two there is if I multiply that entire row by negative two fifths. If I multiply that entire row by negative two fifths and then add it to the row above, that will change the first row. It, this is not gonna change the second but this will change the first row, where if we take negative two fifths times negative four, that will be eight fifths, and eight fifths plus three is eight fifths plus 15 fifths. So eight fifths plus 15 fifths is 23 fifths. We end up with 23 fifths up here in that location, whereas negative two fifths times five is negative two, and when added to two becomes zero. That was the whole reason we used the negative two fifths there whereas negative two fifths times zero is zero, so added to one becomes one, and negative two fifths times one is negative two fifths, so added to zero is just negative two fifths in value. Where now we might consider, uh, we wanna make this into a zero. Now let me show you this. What we might do is go ahead and turn this into a one. 
How can I get that into a 1? I might multiply this entire quantity by 5 20 thirds. If I multiply that entire quantity by 5 20 thirds, this will become 1 0 5 20 thirds comma negative 2 20 thirds. Now I don't necessarily need the comma there. All right. And this will become our new matrix. Where from there, it shouldn't be too tricky to figure out what is going to be multiplied by here. Right? What's going to make this a zero here is if I multiply this entire row by four and add it to this row. Right? If I do that and put that result here, this is not going to change the first row now. You will have again one zero five twenty thirds and negative two twenty thirds in the first row. But if we do this throughout our uh, the, to our second row, four times one is four added to negative one is zero. That will make that zero in that location. Now four times zero is zero, so zero plus five is five. That doesn't change that value at all. But four times five twenty thirds becomes twenty twenty thirds. And 20 20 thirds added to 0 is 20 20 thirds. And then lastly, 4 times negative 2 20 thirds is negative 8 20 thirds. And negative 8 20 thirds added to 1, well, 1 would be another 23 20 thirds, right? So negative 8 20 thirds added to 23 20 thirds would become 15 20 thirds. All right? And then lastly, what we have to do is make this into a 1 by dividing a 5 from each of those values or multiplying 1 fifth throughout that entire row. Right? So if we multiply 1 fifth throughout that entire row, we should find this as our identity matrix on the left. Right? We can see 1, 0, 5, 2 thirds, or sorry, 5, 20 thirds, and negative 2, 20 thirds. Right? We'll still be found in our first row. When the 1 5th distributes throughout these two, it becomes 0, 1. And then 1 5th times 20 20 thirds, you'll get some canceling happening there, leaving you with 4 20 thirds. Right? The 5 and the 20 will cancel, leaving a 5 in the numerator. And then the 1 the 1 5th distributes to the 15 20 thirds, the 5 and the 15 will cancel, leaving a 3 in the numerator. So that will leave behind 3 20 thirds. All right? So what we would find out here. Right. What we've just discovered, and we'll bring that down here, a inverse is this matrix seen right here. It's, it's going to be this, this uh, matrix description that reveals itself on the right-hand side of this augmented form. Right? It is going to be this matrix 5 20 thirds, negative 2 20 thirds, 4 20 thirds, and 3 20 thirds in value. Right? So A inverse is going to be this, where we're, how are we going to use A inverse is we're going to go back into our problem and we're going to multiply A inverse times B, B being this result, right, seen here on the right hand side of this uh, equational, uh, this matrix form of our system of equations, right? B is going to be this. We're going to take A inverse times 14 over negative 34. Right? That is this calculation seen right here. So A inverse equals this, and our matrix of solutions, X bar, would be equal to A inverse times B in this problem, which would be this matrix 5 20 thirds, negative 2 20 thirds, 4 20 thirds, and 3 20 thirds, multiplied by... Uh, matrix B, which we have back here, this is that 14, negative 34, or negative 34 in value, right? Too many 20 thirds in there. Um, so if we do the row column multiplication here, this will reveal to us what is X, right? This is going to be just a two by one result, right? starting with this location coming from this row times this column. So this might require us to break out a calculator just to get through this a little quicker. All right? 5 20 thirds times 14, well 5 times 14 
Yeah, 70 20 thirds. So we have 70 20 thirds, and then we're gonna add on to that, because notice that's a minus and a minus, so this would be plus. We should be able to see that that's what, 68 20 thirds. Right? So what is that, 138 20 thirds. All right, let's double check to see if that doesn't reduce 20 thirds. That does reduce to the value of six in the end. If we simplify that 138 20 thirds, right, that does end up equaling six in value. All right, so the X solution, what we understand is this is gonna be our solutions for X and Y in the system. The X solution is this value of six. As for the y solution, we do the cross product scene here. All right, 4 20 thirds times 14. Well, 4 times 14 is what? 56, uh, right? 4 times 14 is 56 20 thirds. Plus 3 20 thirds times negative 3, 4, uh, negative 34. Well, 3 times negative 34, what is that? A uh, 102 20 thirds, that would be negative, right? 102 20 thirds. And if we take 102 minus 56, right? 102, take away the 56, we'll be left with negative 46 20 thirds, where certainly we can see that does simplify to negative 2 in value. Right? So our y value in the solution is negative 2, right? Uh, thus, the solution is x comma y equal to 6 comma negative 2 in value, right? That is the solution back here to this system of equations. The system of equations that's being expressed as a matrix statement, right? Uh, this system seen right here, its solution is this value we just calculated uh, as being six negative two, and I do believe you can go through and check that. That does sound correct. Uh, again, folks, what we are using here are matrix methods. Uh, those matrix methods involving division of matrices, right? We are kind of approaching this with a division idea in mind for matrices, where X is gonna be this division, but to produce that division, we are gonna to have to use a little bit of uh, multiplication with the inverse matrix, which is what we set up in these augmented matrices and in that augmentation. So I'll stop there and I'll be back with the last example where we're going to do another case of this solving systems in just the exact same manner we had done. So I'll see y'all then folks. All right, College Algebra back here with one more example looking at 6.5 material and using the inverse of a matrix to help solve a system of equations where this time around we have been given this system here. The system 5x minus 7y equals negative 11 and minus 6x plus 8y equals 12. And we are asked to solve this equation using what we call matrix division, using that inverse matrix. And if we recall, the very first thing we want to do is we want to translate this into a matrix statement. If we were to convert this over into a matrix equation, we would build our matrix A times the variable matrix with the left-hand side here, and matrix A would take on the form five, negative seven, negative six, and eight, right? Which would just be the coefficient seen on the variable terms. That would be multiplied by our variables x, y, right? And on the right-hand side would all equal negative 11 twelfths. And if I want to think about what is going to be the xy value here, the value of xy is really going to be the inverse of this matrix we're calling matrix A times the right-hand side matrix. All right? 
what we're going to need is the inverse of a, right? If we might say this is a times my variable matrix equal to b, right? Then what has to be true is my variable matrix has to equal a inverse times matrix b. And what I'm going to need to do is find for matrix A, A inverse, all right? What we might note, we can go through that process. We've done this before, right? We've done this a couple of times before. We are going to take that matrix, 5, negative 7, negative 6, 8, 1, 0, 0, 1. And we're going to consider rewriting this so that it takes on that form that it takes on that form, if I can get a pencil that works here, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, followed by A's inverse on the right-hand side. All right? And we're going to rewrite this into this using our row equivalent operations. All right? And where I've always started is I kind of start here. I ask myself, what times... The given row, other rows added to that row will cause these locations to turn into zero, right? For instance, I could go through this and turn this value into zero up here in the first row if I was to multiply the second row by what would be seven eight. Since that's a minus seven up here that we're going to attempt to convert into zero, if I multiply my second row by 7, 8, or sorry, let's reverse that, 8, yeah, 7, 8 will work, All right? And that distributes itself throughout the row, and then we add it to the row above. This is not going to change my second row, but when I add it to the row above, 7, 8 times 8 is 7, and 7 plus negative 7 makes a 0 in this location. Now, 7 eighths times negative 6, that is going to turn into negative 42 eighths. All right? And we could simplify that. What does that simplify into? 21 fourths. If we wanted to simplify that, maybe we should. All right? 7 eighths times 0 is 0, so plus 1 is 1. And 7 eighths times 1 is 7 eighths, plus 0 is 7 eighths. Now with the zero placed here, we consider what can we do to make zero in this location here, right? So I am going to multiply through this first row by some number that is going to make this value the opposite of negative six, right? I might think x times negative 21 fourths has to equal the opposite of negative six, which is six. So what is going to do that for me? Well, that's going to be x equal to 6 times negative 4 21st. Now, you could do a little convenient canceling here and see that that would be equal to negative 8. Oh, careful there. That would be a 7 down below there. Negative 8 sevenths in value. All right. Multiplying through this first row by negative 8 sevenths and adding it to the row below is going to allow us to turn this negative 6 into a 0, right? This is not going to change my first row. We are focused on changing the second row now, making this into a 0. Negative 8 sevenths times negative 21 fourths. The 7 and the negative 21 cancel, leaving you with minus 3. Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24 divided by 4 turns into positive 6. And when added to the row below, makes this location 0. Negative 8 sevenths times 0 is 0, so plus 8 would be 8. Negative 8 sevenths times 1 is negative 8 sevenths, plus 0 is negative 8 sevenths. And negative 8 sevenths times 7 eighths, well, that's negative 1. And when you add that to 1, you get the value of 0. All right. We conveniently build this statement here. 
where from here, we're almost there, folks. We just need to convert these two rows over into making these values here into the values of one seen here. And we can do that through the first row by multiplying by negative 4 21st. That'll turn this into the value of 1. And we can do that in the second row here by multiplying through by 1 8th. That will turn the 8 into the value of 1. And if I do that, I should get my inverse matrix appearing over here on the right hand side. All right. Negative 421 times negative 21 fourths, that simplifies to 1, times 0 is 0, times 1 is negative 4 21 and times 7 eighths, well, let's see here, the 7 and the 21 cancel to give you 3, the 4 and the 8 cancel to give you 2, that would be what, negative 1 sixth in value? All right. Multiplying through by an eighth in the denominator makes 0 here, 1 here, negative one seventh here, the eights cancel, and then times zero here would just be zero, all right? So A inverse that I'm going to need in the calculation is gonna appear over here on the right-hand side of this augmented matrix. It is this result seen here, all right? So we might go along and say something like, well, since A inverse now is equal to negative 4 21st, negative 1 6, negative 1 7 0. I'm able to take that now, as we had noted, and going to multiply it by B, B being this matrix right here, to reveal what is my variable matrix for X. All right? Since A equals this, right? X then my variable matrix must be equal to A inverse times B, which is gonna be the matrix negative 4 21st, negative 1 6, not dividing by anything, negative 1 7 0 times the matrix, now B, B is the matrix that comes from this right hand side, that'd be negative 11 twelfths, negative 11 over tw and 12. Right, where if I consider now the solution to this system, right, we do the row column multiplication seen here, and that's going to give me this result in my values for x and y, respectively, right, my value of x. And then when I do the row column multiplication seen here with the second row column, that's going to give me this result seen here for my y value. All right? So I am going to need to take negative 4 21st times negative 11. Well, that would be 44 21st. And add that to negative 1 6 times 12. Well, that would be added to, you can see there that the, the 12 and the 6 would cancel, leaving a 2 in the numerator. That would leave us negative 2 in value. All right? So if we simplify that, that would be 44 21st minus, common denominator here would make that negative 42 21st, which in the end would leave us with 2 21st for our x value. All right? As for our y value, our y value is going to come from multiplying this row column with this. And notice that is a little simpler here. That is negative 1 seventh times negative 11th would be 11 sevenths. Added to 0 times 12 is 0. So this is just 11 sevenths in value. And this here, right, must be my solution, right? Uh, thus, x comma y, my solution to this system, must be 2 21st comma 11 sevenths in value. And we were able to find that using some inverse matrices here, folks, right? It was again this process of setting up X to be A inverse times B, right? Where does that work? Actually, that work was over here, right? where I would need to calculate A inverse for this particular matrix seen here. 
And I can do that using my row operations as I've illustrated in the last few examples here, folks. And then in the end, once I get A inverse, I just take it times this matrix B in a row product multiplication and a dot product, and it will reveal my solution for variables X and Y, right, with that product. All right. So, folks, again, this is examples from section 6.5, where we have looked at finding the inverse using that inverse to perform division, and then following up from the division process using the division to help us solve some systems. We're in the division process helping us to solve some systems. We are making use of the inverse matrix. All right? Uh, as I highlighted, though, we are going to come back to one more quick idea known as the determinant, where the determinant is going to help me find this inverse matrix for the case of a 2 by 2 matrices. And then I'm going to show you some methods of how to do all this on our calculator, which for some of you, you might find rather convenient, very, really helpful to be able to go through and check some of this work on our calculator. As I work through these problems, right, there's a lot of potential for mistake. In fact, I may have made a mistake in here. I hope not. Uh, but we can certainly have our calculator to be able to go back and double check our work. And I'll show you how to do some of that. All right? So, folks. Uh, with that said, I got one more video coming out to you here shortly, and that would be looking at uh, what's going to be called the determinant, which is going to be used to help us calculate this inverse matrix, and then to spend some time looking at these skills on our calculator. All right. Uh, with that said, I'll, I'll wrap this video up, though, and I'll be back shortly with the next. I will see you all then.